is from Trump, comrade Kamala, regulatory jihad. I wonder where she comes from. Kara, are Trump's personal attacks undercutting at the same time, he's trying to make an argument about her own policy. Yeah, keep him coming. He looks like an idiot when he's doing them. Honestly, it's just he can't help himself and he doesn't know how to deal with her. It's really interesting to watch him trying to formulate an attack. And it has to be personal. The other part is, I know this sounds crazy, but he talks about her looks a lot. And everything with Trump is looks. <laughs> and it's creepy. And he's... He thinks she's pretty, I think. Beautiful. And doesn't I mean, know, beautiful yeah. and doesn't know what to do. So, again, he's going after Coach Walls. Like, who, is, who's the, who cares about who the vice president is on, on many levels? So I, I think keep him coming. If he, and he should be focusing on her record. But he, he can't. He just can't. I, I, I want to pick up on that with you, Raihan, because there is a solid case on the record to be made against Harris, uh, so the far left position. She took on a bunch of issues in 2019 when she thought her real opposition was Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Uh, uh, some of the policy failures on the economy and immigration in the Biden-Harris administration. So why does he keep getting in the way of making those arguments? I mean, he does make them, but then he tops it and ends up getting the headline and the focus with calling her comrade Kamala. Well, I think that this is who Trump is. It's who he's always been. He's, it's very difficult for him to be really disciplined. But here's the challenge. Uh, if you look at the uh, Harris campaign, they have had the best political month in modern political history. It's really quite extraordinary. And part of that is bringing in new talent, bringing in veterans of the Obama campaigns. And I think that Trump is going to have to do something similarly dramatic. He needs some kind of change. He had a team that, in a very disciplined way, prosecuted the case against the incumbent president, Joe Biden. They were not prepared to get punched in the mouth. They have been. So the proof is going to be in whether or not they're able to make a similarly dramatic change or shake up to how they're approaching this race. So, so Will so Trump rise to the challenge? Because everybody has praised yeah. the team that he had, Susie Wiles and Chris LaCivita. And, you know, he ran a, a really smart campaign in the primaries. I think his really best decision was not to engage in the debates at all. Are you saying... Because, you know, Corey Lewandowski, his original campaign manager, is there. Do you think there should be a staff shakeup? Do you think there will be? I do think that they will likely bring in other folks to augment the team. I think that Wiles and Lasivita have a lot, uh, you know, uh, they've accomplished a lot. They deserve a lot of credit and praise. But I do think it's very clear that they need a different kind of approach uh, in the months to come. And uh, we'll two see if Trump is able to. That's yeah. right. That's you right. Know, but I do think Trump understands that most elections are vibes election. As much as we talk about sort of policy and we want more policy, meat on the bone from the Kamala Harris team, he very much much wants to kill the vibes around the Kamala Harris campaign. His whole election in 2016 was a vibes election. But, but going after her personally isn't doing no, that. But I, I think he thinks the sort of comrade uh, Kamala stuff, that she, she, he thinks that kind of stuff works. Where is she really from? You know, it's sort of a, a, a rebirth of birtherism, for lack of a better word. So he very well knows. I mean, that, that sort of her beauty, he is obsessed with that because yeah. he knows that that sells to the American people, someone who is very intelligent. Well, Kristen, well, Kristen, I want to pick up on exactly what Raihan was saying, which is she could not have had a better month than yeah. she's had. And he has had a pretty terrible month. Truly know her. I think what folks saw on that stage was someone that is tough, that is a prosecutor, um, that has spent her entire career representing one client, and that is the people. She talked about her experience as a prosecutor, about how she will take that case to Donald Trump, about how she is tough and has always taken on sexual predators, the big banks, the, the cartels. That's a story that we heard and the people saw many people for the first time. We also got to see the Kamala Harris uh, that is compassionate, that that is all about supporting people, especially those that need our more support. And I think also people got to know her family and her family values, how critical uh, her own family is to her, but also her mother, her middle class upbringing, uh, what they taught her and the kind of values that they taught her about always fighting fighting uh, for the people in the community. So uh, we're in California, of course, we know her, we're, we're excited and fired up. I um, mean, it's great to see the country uh, just getting to know the person that we respect so much. And, and finally, I'll say, if it's one thing that came across also very clear is that we have a brilliant person at the head of this ticket that is going to take that experience and that knowledge and defeat Donald Trump in November.
Speaking of him, you've been an outspoken critic of Donald Trump. And during the DNC, we saw some prominent Democrats. We had both Obamas and Clintons, President Biden, the candidate herself, who've typically been less direct in their comments. But they went directly on offense when talking about Donald Trump. What caused the change in tenor? And are Democrats united in this approach? I, th I think we are united. I mean, look, it's, we're in a different phase of this campaign right now. Uh, we have to make the case against Donald Trump and why he is a danger to the country. Donald Trump is a convicted felon. He's a criminal. He is a con man. In my opinion, and many others, he's the worst person to ever be president of the United States. And his project 2025 takes our country backwards in ways that are scary and dangerous, moving abortion rights backwards, moving LGBTQ plus rights backwards, eliminating the Department of Education, treating immigrants and people that are working class or poor uh, less than other people in this country. And so we should be crystal clear that this is a choice for people to make. It's a choice between moving forward and a choice between going backwards with Donald Trump. And so that case, I'm really glad to, he to have heard people going after Donald Trump directly. I sure did during my remarks and will continue to do that throughout this campaign. Joining me now is Megan Hayes, former special assistant to President Biden, along with Morris Reed, political strategist and former staff aide in the Clinton administration. Welcome to you both. Um, we'll go ladies first here, Megan. So talk about the patriotism here. The convention, as you know, featured the Chicks, of course, formerly known as the Dixie Chicks. They were singing the national anthem. There were American flags flying, USA chants. Are Democrats reclaiming this love of country that Republicans have tried to claim ownership of? You know, the Republican Party doesn't have a monopoly on patriotism and love of country. I think that the Democrats really seized on the opportunity to show that Democrats also have love of country and also are there and have been. We never lost it. We, we were always fighting for democracy in 2020. You saw that. And in 2024, you're seeing that again. It was incredible to be there to watch the Dixie Chicks sing, all the chanting of USA. The crowd would just erupt in it all, erupt in the chant all of the time. Um, so, you know, I think that the Democrats never really lost patriotism or lost that at the forefront. I just don't think it was at the forefront of our values that was forward facing uh, in the media or in these big public events. But it was really exciting to see and a really uh, incredible um, to watch all of this come to life over the last week. Yeah, absolutely. So, Morris, one of the Republicans' biggest lines continues to be that Democrats hate America. How long can they keep doing that with this new patriotic energy, along with the choice of Walls, who's kind of the very embodiment of a Midwestern all-American? Well, I think it's an old line that may have worked in the past, but it'll be difficult when you have someone like the governor who has served. Also very difficult when you have a person with the, the vice president's story, an immigrant family, both parents moved here looking to find the American dream. So love of country has never been something that Democrats have shied away from. Republicans have worn that energy differently. But I think you'll see this time with the vice president and the governor, uh, they will embrace it uh, and they'll fight for it, uh, just as the Republicans have fought for it in the past. Yeah. And Megan, despite all this momentum, many DNC speakers were very clear this election is not in the bag yet, and they warned of being too confident. Take a listen. But you should never underestimate your adversary. And these people are really good at distracting us, at triggering doubt. Remember, there are still so many people who are desperate for a different outcome. So no matter how good we feel tonight or tomorrow or the next day, this is going to be an uphill battle. It's the fourth quarter. We're down a field goal, but we're on offense and we've got the ball. So is that message getting through to voters? Are there worries about complacency or have voters learned their lesson from 2016? No, I think that voters are complacent. I don't think voters are really going to be paying attention until after Labor Day when their kids are back in school and early vote starts in a couple of weeks in a lot of places. So I think until we start voting, until they have the debate, I, do, I really do think that this is going to be an uphill battle till the very, very end, till Election Day. Democrats are really taking note of that. I think in 2016, I think people, you know, saw they got complacent and they saw what happened. I hope that that doesn't happen again. I think people know that and understand it in a different way than they did before. But, you know, it's it's always going to be an uphill battle. The polls are extremely close. This is going to be one 10, 15,000 votes in these battleground states. We cannot lose sight of the goal here, and that's winning in November and beating Donald Trump. And I just think that 
Democrats really need to take notice and continue to organize and continue to talk to your neighbors, just like um, Michelle Obama's speech is say something, do something. I think that we taking out the convention that just continues to need to happen moving through November. Mm -hmm. You know, Morris, we heard uh, really a combination this week of reaching across the aisle, saying that there's room in the Democratic tent for everyone, along with more cutting remarks and jabs at Trump and Republicans. A couple tricks up his sleeve. One was just be in the minds of a lot of swing voters, not as old as the other guy. And two, shut the frig up. Shut your mouth. When was Trump gaining the most in the polls? Right after the debate, where a lot of people felt Biden didn't do very well. And then he disappeared. He was, for, for Trump at least, radio silent. It seemed like we would go four or five days without a Trump event, Trump press conference, even any significant posts on his, on, the, on his website. And that's where he really built his lead. But with Biden gone, he can't help himself but be the biggest nut job. And he also can't help himself by playing into Harris's hands. I've talked about this. Donald Trump, in many ways, speaks to the Republican base. But... He is terrible relative to other successful Republican presidents, successful, not in policy, they've all been terrible, but successful in the sense that like they've been able to win elections, your Reagans, your Bushes, etc., at, at selling themselves as the patriot and, and implicitly or explicitly calling their opponent the, 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 the I hate America bleeding heart liberal. And what Trump has done is he has said, he's made it easy for Harris. You know, Harris has to do the work, of course, but he's made it easy for her to go out there and, and be the flag waver. Because Donald Trump's the one calling America broken, say it's, it's terrible, it's never been worse, the country's going to, going to crap, um, you know, the, uh, we're, we're, we're awful, no one likes us, no one respects us, we're the laughing stock of the world. Uh, and Harris is like, look, we're we're by far, a, uh, far from a perfect country, but I love my country. Donald Trump trash talks this country. I talk it up. And the Republicans, they've given up football. They've given up um, <laughs> you know, all, all of these sorts of things. They've given up all of these traditional cultural markers that now the Democrats can seize on. So Trump in his desperation is flailing and it's just digging the hole deeper and he's inside the hole. 